Hey Buzz YouTube, how's it going everybody? Got for y'all today a Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle against Nagid. This was for my most recent stream. I know I haven't uploaded in like the past two days or so, but I've kind of just been lazy just taking it easy because I actually got two days off work, which was really great. But yeah, anyways, team preview. I actually really wanted to use the combination of Aegislash and Hydreigon because I've seen some people run that and I wanted to try it out for myself as well as Jellicent and Heatran. Now, looking at threats to my opponent's side of the field, the only real thing I was going to be worried about was going to be that Skullipede just because if it Swords Dance and gets up a couple speed boosts, it could possibly sweep me, especially if it does have Earthquake, so I really have to watch out for that. But I'm going to be leading off with my wrong Aegislash as my opponent ends up leading off with a Fortress. The Aegislash Slash I meant to bring was supposed to have Shadow Ball, but this one had Swords Dance and Shadow Sneak and no special moves, so obviously Shadow Sneak wouldn't have done much to it, so I switched directly into my Heatran and then predicting him to bring in the Rotom, I'm just going to go for my own Stealth Rocks, as obviously I don't want to stay in and take a Hydro Pump, but something was telling me he would go for the Vol Switch and I really wanted to stay in, so I could go for a Lava Plume on whatever was going to come in and possibly even burn it, but uh, that is not the case and I do make the Stay Switch into my Aegislash as he does end up Volt Switching into his own Aegislash and I go for the Swords Dance predicting him to King Shield predicting me to attack him but he goes straight for the Shadow Ball and just knocks out my Aegislash but it's fine it is okay because I have a Hydreigon I am modest Life Lord with Fire Blast I should be able to easily knock out Aegislash because Hydreigon does have a really good special attack set so he's gonna go for the King Shield just getting to see what I might want to lock myself into. As I go for the Fire Blast, he lives on like 10-15%. Above that, he has the weakness policy and no lie. At this point, I'm like, okay, well, I just possibly got swept by this Age Slash because I don't think anything on my team can take a plus two hit except for maybe my Shaman. And if it doesn't take the plus two hit, then as I said, I get swept. So I bring in Shaman. I'm expecting him just to go for the King Shield, but either way, I'm just going to go for the Earth Power on the off chance that he didn't. And he did go for the Shadow Seek, and I lived. That way, if I went for like HP Ice or the Seed Flare, I wouldn't have to miss or risk not knocking him out. As he makes a very, very odd play, and he doesn't go for the Shadow Sneak. I don't know if he didn't carry it, but I mean, I do have rest on this Shaman, so I could have just rested up later in the battle, but still, if I was him, I would have definitely gone for the Shadow Sneak as he brings in the Talonflame. I thought this was a bit odd at first, but you're going to see that later, it turns out that his Skullipede probably actually doesn't have any offensive moves, which this was his perfect chance to bring in the Skullipede. But I bring in my Heatran knowing I should be able to take any hit from that Talonflame. He is just going to go for the safe U-turn back on now into his Rotom. And then this turn, I predict him to Volt Switch thinking I'm going to be fearing Hydro Pump, but he Hydro Pumps. Thankfully, I am specially defensive, so I'm able to take the hit and in return get off a decent bit of damage with the Lava Plume. I have literally used Lava Plume like nine times with this Heatran and not a single time have I burned anything. Did the percentage drop? I know it didn't, but still, 30% after about 9 Lava Plumes, you would think at least maybe 3 of those would be burns, but either way, he unfortunately misses the Hydro Pump, but I do have rest, as I said, so I could have rested up this turn instead of going for the Seed Flare as I did. He's going to switch into the Fortress, and I was actually very worried that my Earth Power wouldn't be able to knock, to knock him out, because if he goes for the Rapid Spin, that Talonflame is free to come in as much as it pleases until it dies off from Recoil. So I'm going to go for the Earth Power. Luckily for me, because I am Life Orb, I am able to easily knock out the Fortress, which means my Stealth Rocks are still up, and if that uh, Talonflame does have an even amount of HP, it should die off to the next switch in. So he brings in the Skullipede, and I'm thinking he's probably going to go for the Mega Horn or go for the Protect, then go for the Mega Horn. So what I'm going to do is bring in my Physically Defensive Jellicent, which should be able to take a plus two Mega Horn, and I'm hoping maybe even a plus two Poison Jab, but he does end up going for the Protect, as he then turns out to have Iron Defense. Now at first, I thought this was very, very weird, but then I remembered that he had a Gardevoir on his team and a plus two speed, plus two defense Gardevoir is actually kind of scary, especially if it does turn out to be Mega Gardevoir, which it most likely is. So at this point, I was actually kind of panicking a little bit, but I did predict him two Baton Pass, two Gardevoir, and I do end up going for the Shadow Ball. So I know that at least I will get off a bit of prior damage to hopefully be able to revenge kill it with my Medicham because I do have the Bullet Punch. 
And judging from that damage, if he did knock me out this turn with any move that he would have gone for, I'm pretty positive Medicham would have been able to come in and knock him out. Even though Gardevoir was at plus 2 defense, still, Mega Medicham does have a massive physical attack stat thanks to uh, Pure Power, I believe, or Huge Power. No, Huge Power is for Azumarill and Mega Mawa. Pure Power is for Medicham. Anyways, I take the Psy Shock a whole lot better than I thought I would, and it turns out that even if he did go for the Shadow Ball without a crit, he wouldn't have been able to knock me out, so it didn't really matter what he went for because I still would have been able to live the hit, as he then brings in the Rotom after I knock out his Gardevoir and ends up going for the will o which I thought was a little bit odd, but then again, it's better than him going for the Volt Switch because now my Jellicent won't be at a lower amount of HP. Then again, judging for how much damage that Volt Switch did, I might have actually been able to be brought back up to full HP, maybe? I don't know, or at least like 60-70%. Anyways, he Volt Switches into the Talonflame, which turns out to have an even amount of HP and ends up dying off to the Stealth Rocks, which is really great because now I no longer have to worry about it. But then again, if he did live, I still would have just left in my Jellicent for Death Fodder because at this point, I don't really need my Jellicent. I'm just kind of leaving it in for Death Fodder, to be perfectly honest. As he brings back in the roll time, he actually ends up going for the rest, which at first I thought was a bit of an odd play, but then again, it's actually better for him to be at a high amount of HP for obvious reasons than him being at around like maybe 20% after another Stealth Rock switch in. So I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball, just get off some damage before he knocks me out with a Volt Switch. This way I can hopefully ensure that a Drain Punch from my Mega Medicham will be able to knock him out, because I really do not want to rely on Seed Flare from my shaming because knowing my luck I'm gonna miss it so getting off that bit of damage with Shadow Ball was really great for me as he both switches into his final Pokemon which is this Skullipede I'm just gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve because as I said I do have the Bullet Punch which means even if he does go for the Protect the following turn I will still outspeed him thanks to the priority of Bullet Punch and I'm able to knock him out at this point his last Pokemon is the Rotom and I'm thinking I can easily knock this out with the Drain Punch but no! Rotom lives! Which doesn't really matter but still that's a lot of bulk on a Rotom and then the following turn I'm just gonna be able to knock him out with the Drain Punch heck I'm pretty positive a Bullet Punch would have been able to knock him out which is four times resisted but yeah that was just a really really fun battle that I hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like leave a comment subscribe to some more content if you missed my two previous uploads they are playing on your screen right now they should have annotations on them click them go check them out if you have not done so yet and with that guys I will hopefully be seeing you all soon so later everybody